Class 11, I was talking about the hindrances and I have finished up to 4. That is hindrance of finance and to cover up this hindrance, a proper banking service is needed for both the customers as well as for the producers. So that ultimate trade takes place. Next comes the hindrance of risk. Now, what do you mean by risk? Risk means uncertainty. Any type of occurrence that might be not known prior or any kind of future happenings that might be not known prior to the businessman. Suppose a businessman produces 1000 units of a commodity, say X. And why he produces? So that ultimately trade takes place and he can earn money or profit. So, a businessman engages in production of X commodities, 1000 units he produces and why he produces? So that ultimate trade takes place, he can earn money or profit. But suddenly suppose there can be anything in the production process or where he is storing in the warehouses, sudden unforeseen events like theft, robbery, fire, uh, fire can break out. So all these might damage the property. It might result in losing the property. Theft or robbery might be, might take place if there is no cautious security. And if fire breaks out, then the entire thousand units of the product might burn or half of the product might burn. So the businessman will not be able to sell and earn profit. And not only that, they will also lose the capital because you know that businessmen, they have to bear a capital or money layout they have prior the production process. They need to engage land, labor, machineries in order to produce the product. So their entire money with which they have produced this 1000 units of commodity will be a wastage because they cannot get profit or cannot recover the capital that they have put in for production. And this is the reason for which many producers, they, they think that production is risky. Anything might happen. They might not be earning profit. Or else, even if they produce, they feel that not to produce in large, large amount, not to produce in bulk amount, and not to expand their business because they fear that anything might happen which will be risky for the business which will result in their losses. So in order to boost the spirit of this businessman and in order to continue with production, what do they need? They need particular insurance policies. Now what does the insurance companies give? They give the assurance that if any unforeseen events arise, you will not get the profit what you will get only if you sell to the consumers. But at least whatever damage has occurred to the goods that you have made, the capital which is incurred to make those items, that means the capital means which the businessman bears from his pocket, at least that can be recovered. So, for example, rupees 5 lakh, the businessman have used as capital to produce the 1000 units of X. And he wished to earn a profit of, or ultimately, rupees 10 lakh. That means, whatever money he has put in, in production, he want to double that from sale. But if damage occurs in the intermediate path, they will not be able to make any profit. But this capital amount will also be lost. And that is why they fear of continuing up with production process. So, if proper insurance policy is given, it assures the businessman that in case of any risky situation or unforeseen events, at least, even if they don't get the profit, 
whatever money they have wasted in the making of those products that money will be recovered so it gives a protection against risk so insurance services are needed for the business to continue with uninterrupted production number 6 is hindrance of information now many time it happens that producer produces different types of goods and consumers are also ready to buy those goods but they don't have proper information about what are the things coming up in the market now when you visit a shop and when you see a new product whose information is totally unknown to you you will never buy the product because the product was never advertised the customers don't know its features don't know how much it is important what was what is its correct price so due to lack of this information the producer's product might remain unsold the consumers are not willing to buy so for trade what is needed advertising service is also needed nowadays whatever comes up in the market whatever the product producer produces we can see those ads through tv through radio forecasting happens and broadcasting takes place through radio then advertisements are released through internet so we get whole lot of information about the newly made products and we can through those advertisement relying on those advertisement we go to the shops to buy the product so producers product if they are advertised well they will be bought by consumers and final act of trade will be smooth but if there is lack of information to the customers the producers will not be able to smoothly trade out those goods due to lack of information so these are the set of hindrances which appear while trading so a business if it only concentrates on production and it if it feels that okay after production i can trade out all the commodities then it's wrong then what is needed commercial services are needed to smooth the process of trading so that whatever production happens through commercial services it eases down the production the trading process and final trade can take place so these are the hindrances problems while trading and these are the services to overcome those problems and that is why it is called aids to trade organized market transportation warehousing banking insurance and advertising these are the services provided by certain business houses they help the process of trade to those business houses who are involved in production and these are the set of problems these are the set of solutions for every respective problems now we are moving on to the objectives of business now the objectives of business can be divided into three types economic objectives social objectives and human or individual objectives now what do you mean by economic objectives any objectives or purpose of business which will help in earning money or earning profit for the business number 1 what is the objective of business to earn profit there is no explanation needed requiring this because those who are operating the business what what is the end product they are organizing the business they are engaging in production they are hiring labor uh, machineries land to make up the product why to give out the goods for free no they are doing it for the purpose of making money out of it so the first initiative or objective is to earn profit number 2 is survival now if a business only concentrates on profit earning it can earn for a year suppose a business is earning profit very good but if the person wants to hold the business for a long term for a long period of time and to earn in profits over the years 
then its main aim is to survive in the market because every business house is facing competition there are so many other business who might be engaged in production of similar product so only earning one time profit or uh, one year profit is not enough for a business to survive in the long run to survive the threats of the competition in order to survive in the market for long term more than profit they have to think of increasing the customer base or increasing the market for their product so profit is a monetary gain they will definitely concentrate but only concentrating on profit will not help the business to run in the long run they need to survive they need to face the competition they need to show the customers that their product is the best out of the rest products available in the market so they need to increase the customer base so that many customers will come to know about the business and its product and the business house will get customers over the years and it will help the business to earn not only profit for a year one or two but for a long period of time and they need to capture the market for that the market is constituted by the customers more the number of customers who wants to acquire products from the business it means that the business have got a good hold of customers it has a good will it can cater to the needs of the customer and it supplies to the maximum people present in the market number 3 is growth now profit they will obviously think but sometimes their continuance or survival might come under question so they might focus on survival and third is growth what do you mean by growth growth means this profit should not be one one time or two time huge profit profit rate should increase every year that means whatever you have earned last year from the business this year the earning should be growing the next year future year it should be growing much more so in order so you know that businessman they don't earn a fixed salary and since they don't earn a fixed salary they want to always take steps deliberately to increase their source of income and increase their amount of profit or the size of profit so every time they need to take up steps so that their current profit is more than the past profit and their future profits will be even more than that that helps the business to earn and make much more money and turn it out profitable so how can the profit size grows the profit size grows if the number of franchisees increased for example you will see there are certain shops which started with only one in number okay an outlet like kfc kfc is well known for its food so there was only one outlet and after that what happened to increase its business to increase the profits it has developed almost in every parts of this city and in many parts of other states so what it is doing it is growing with time and from the every franchises it is able to reap up profits so growth is possible only if the business expands itself if it increases the number of outlets or franchise or if it increases the number of products produced for example samsung was known to produce mobile phones later on what happened they are also producing tablets they are producing washing machine so what basically it is doing it is increasing the different lines of product so that from every product they can earn profit 
and they are making the products available to the customer so that customers come to know that this brand is making so many different products and if one is satisfied by using Samsung phone then he or she might feel that the brand is good and they might purchase the Samsung brand washing machine too. So what the business is doing? From the goodwill earned from one business or one product, it tries to make a scope for other products so that it can increase the customer and it can multiply the amount of profit. So that is growth. Now coming to social objectives of a business. Now only if a business concentrates in for its profit, for its survival or growth, it is very selfish on the part of the business because it is only thinking about itself. How to make profit, how to survive in the market, how to grow the size of profit, all these things. But the business exists in the surrounding in the society and the society supports the business. The societal support is also required for the business to continue itself. So social objective means the business, since the business is running by, with the help of the customers who come up from the society, they are supporting that's why the business is running. Similarly, the business also needs to support the society other than thinking about its own economic objectives. So these are known as social objectives, what the business has to do for the society so as to get continuous support of the society and so that the business can exist in the long run. Number one, supply quality products at fair prices. Supply quality product, that means the business, if it provides below quality product, what will happen? Customers might one or two times not understand that they are giving below quality product. But when they will understand, will they buy the goods from that business house? No. So what will happen? The business has earned only one or two times profit, but after that the customers will not support the business. They will not buy from the business because it gives below quality items. So the business profit is going to hamper. So if it tries to cheat the society, cheat the society by giving below quality items and at a very high prices, then it will only be able to make profit for a short period of time. So it has to look towards giving quality products and not cheating the customers and making the products available at fair prices. So even if the business wants to earn profit, it should earn it fairly. It should not keep up profits like that. Suppose it is producing at rupees 5 and selling at rupees 100. That means they are, they are giving inferior quality product and they are charging a very huge profit. They are basically cheating on the consumers and the consumers won't support that for long. So to exist, in the society, the business also needs to cater to the needs of the society. So it has to give quality product and at fair prices, then only the customers will be in support of the business, they will continuously buy and the business will also make a continuous profit and earn goodwill. Number two, avoid unfair trade practices. Now few unfair trade practices I am talking about now. One is black marketing, then adulteration and coding. So these are the unfair trade practices. A business sometimes practices all these things. What do you mean by black marketing? Black marketing means selling a very less quantity at fair prices to the consumers whereas reserving the rest of the products in order to sell at a higher price to the consumers who are willing to pay a higher price. So what they are doing, they are cheating the normal consumers, the 
consumers are ready to pay the proper price but the businessman in greed of earning more profit they will sell a part they will reserve a part only to make it avail available to those consumers who are willing to pay a higher price that is known as black marketing number 2 adulteration adulteration is mixing up things together and selling it to the people and adulteration means with some superior quality you are also adding on some below average quality product and giving it a look of a refined form but inside it is totally a below quality product so that is known as adulteration so basically unfair because you are cheating on the consumers third is hoarding hoarding means creating an artificial shortage suppose the businessman have produced and this also happened few days back few months back in our uh, in our city also that onions were not available in the shops why onion was not available in the shop was they not produced no hoarding was going on hoarding means creating artificial shortage of the product it is produced but the producer is not willing to sell they are telling that it is unavailable why they are doing that because onions are required for cooking for daily purposes so one or two days or one week you can do without onions but what will happen after that people will be wanting to buy that the demand will grow and the shopkeepers can sell it at a higher price because people are now demanding more because they were not having not getting onions so they will be now ready to pay a higher price in order to acquire the one or two kg of onions so what will happen even if you charge a higher price customers will be willing to give because in the shops there is steady unavailability of the product but actually it is a artificial shortage there was no such shortage in order to increase the profit by selling at a higher price they tried to make an artificial shortage so that customers can increase their demand their demand grows and they are and the business units are able to sell at a higher price and make high profit so this these three all are unfair trade practices which are followed by business but if they do it that for a long time they are causing harm to the society and ultimately the society might not support such business and they might fail to continue in the future and earn profits in the long run number 3 generates employment opportunity now you know that a business produces and how it produces by engaging land labor and machineries that means in order to produce the business requires labor and when it absorbs labor many people from the society gets job so it gives an employment opportunity to the jobless so it reduces the problem of unemployment so that's a kind of societal benefit that the business can do number 4 protect protective environment now many business house they undertake production and they undertake production with animal spirit that means they are producing huge quantities but when production takes place you have seen factory emits huge amount of smoke so they are not considering the environmental factors due to production production increase might help the business to earn profit but production increase is going to have a negative effect on environment and if the business does not consider the environment and try to make profit what will happen the environmental will degrade environmental condition 
the societal people will face a problem due to this environmental degradation and they will come to know that it is the cause, the business production is the cause of such environmental pollution. So they will not want the business to exist and that will also hamper the continuity of the business. So it is required the business to take much effective steps to protect the environment. They can concentrate on production but they need to have a check on the emissions of smoke and creating pollution in the environment. So they should also protect the environment. Now coming to human or individual objectives. Now here what I have said that a business in order to undertake production it uses labor. Now when it uses labor it should also see that it is giving a healthy and safe working condition. Labors are like a set when the labors are working for the business organization. It is required to say to see that they are working under safe and healthy working condition. So the business uses labor and they should keep a check that the labors are getting a healthy and safe working condition or not because the labors are kind of a set who are being utilized by the business to undertake the production and from that production the business earns profit. So final is the profit and initially by employment of labor only the production takes place which helps the business to earn profit. So labor since it is the main source of business for earning profit afterwards, it should take healthy, it should provide healthy and safe working conditions. Number two, it should also provide fair salaries. Now many business houses, what they do, they want to earn more profit. So they try to exploit the labors, they make them work for long hours more than their energy levels they have to work they are exploited and the businessman earns profit but he gives a very low wage to the labor so it should also be seen that labor's interests are not sacrificed they also get fair salaries number three security of service now every labor who are working in the business if they know that they can be hired anytime or fired anytime there is no guarantee of employment there is no guarantee of money income, then they will also not be willing to work for that business. So a business should take enough steps so that it can, when it is giving employment, it is sure that at least holding the labor for a certain span of time so that there is security of service of the labor. Number four, Financial and non-financial assistance. Now assistance means benefits. Financial benefits means suppose a business is giving money for health checkup, money for buying medicines, then provi provident fund, all these things. That means it is giving some financial help or benefit to a labor who is working for the business. And non-financial benefits means, suppose it is not giving directly money, but it is organizing something which is benefit to the labor, benefiting the labor, like free health checkups. They are not directly, the business houses are not directly giving money, but they are organizing such checkup campaigns so that they get non-monetary support or benefit from the business or free pick up and drop. So the labor's transportation cost is not required. Now fifth, opportunity of growth and development of skills. Now every labor or every person who is working for the business, they want promotion after a certain time period. Because they are doing the same work for a long time, they are already skilled and they want some areas 
where they can grow themselves, where their experience will matter and will help them to earn more income. So business should also check that whether everyone is given the opportunity to grow and if they are having lack of skills, the business should take enough skills to train them and develop their skills so that they can work, they can perform all the challenging activities with their skill. So these are the three sets of business objectives. Economic objectives means only catering to the business needs, social objectives, for the society because the business needs the support of the society where it exists for running for its existence in the long run and number three human or individual objective that means to all those individuals working within the business what are the steps or what are the things that the business should keep in mind so that it can treat the labor as an asset because he is the ultimate one who is generating production, helping the business to earn profit at the end.